next up, I'll plug in my phone. Now we're gonna talk about the app. You get an app, DJI Fly app, straight through the app stores, getting you ready to go. It's actually got a great tutorial. It's got some nice screens showing you how to use it. So to connect to the drone, you'll need an app called DJI Fly. So just install that from Google Play or the iOS app store. And it requires photo permission, location permission. Yep, lots of stuff, privacy stuff, agree. And then DJI collects the following information. So we need this one for device activation. So pretty much they're all required if you want a happy app. Do you want to use the product improvement program? Personally, I skip it. And now it's time to log in or register. I guess. Lock this one in first, then slot it in, and then kind of like fudge it so it kind of like flops into place. Then watch it turn off. And there you have it. It's on. I'm going to turn on the controller now. So you tap once to see the battery indicator and then tap once and tap longer. And then it turns on and starts to connect. That's the flashing lights. Over on the drone, around the bottom, you can do the same sort of function. Tap once to see the battery level and then tap once and tap again, holding down. And that starts it up. On Android, you get prompted if you want to always open up this app whenever the controller is connected. I always take that so that way whenever I plug in the phone to the remote, it will straight away launch the application. So straight away, the first thing we see is that we need to activate our Mavic Mini. So I'm just gonna read all of that to find out about all the cool stuff. I've already gone ahead and activated my DJI Care to have extra accidental damage protection on this one. Aircraft resetting wireless network settings to match local laws and regulations. Wait and connect again later. Aircraft activated. So there it is, we've got a couple of sections to look at. This is the album where all of our pictures will be saved to, as well as the main gallery. You got Skypixel. To be honest, I never use this section. My recommendation to do once you've got the app, go through the firmware and Fly more database, update that, make sure you're on the latest version. For me, I was naturally on the latest version because I just got this brand new and it just was recently released. But by the time you're watching this video, maybe you're in the future and you got some updates, make sure you're on the latest update. Hopefully, if any issues had occurred, they would have ironed it out in future updates. Profile, you get to find your drone, see how much hours you spent on the drone. Here we can check for firmware updates, update our FlySafe database and privacy. I guess we can disable these ones now if we choose to. Also, something I recommend is check the app the day before you plan on flying, because in some cases there was a critical update and it said you had to install this update before flying. This is on my previous drones and updating it can take about 10, 20 minutes and it will eat up your battery cycles. So if you are planning to go on any missions, check the app, make sure you're up to date and then fly the next day. So you hit the go fly button and it takes you into the camera view and you can see me right there. This is my drone. Yo, it's a bit very sluggish to sync up, I gotta say. Maybe there's too much interference in this room. Now we're gonna go through the settings inside the application. And there's a couple of critical settings, I'd say change straight away. And one is the return to home altitude. So by default, the return to home altitude is the height. It will come back to you when it needs to come back to you. And it's by default 30 meters. That's a bit too low in the ground for me because um, I've crashed my drones previously. I've landed them on a tree. I've, uh, yeah, trees are your biggest enemies. And these guys, they do not have any front or back or side sensors. So when they're returning to home, they are blind as a mouse. They will hit whatever is hidden. I like to fly as high as possible. That way I avoid all the objects and that's about 120 meters. One thing I'd say about this drone, because it's so small, it is hard to spot in the sky. And that goes on with the next issue I'm going to say is, and you get to choose the maximum distance you fly the drone. By default, it's 2,000. You've got to be Superman to see it at 2,000 meters. Or just, I, I can't see it. I, I can't see it at 2,000. The most I can see it is around 500 meters. You can use a map to correlate and all that kind of stuff. But the hardest part is, is when you're looking at it, you see it. But once you look away and then try looking back, unless the skies are completely clear, it's hard to lock in and find it again. So for me, it's around 500 meters the most when it's clear blue skies. So probably for you guys, if you're starting out, put yourself hard limit of 200 meters and then grow out to 500 to give you a little play area. But do not 
do not do that 2000. And furthermore, when it comes into the bad stuff that will happen to you, and it happened to me, and it's gonna, gonna be in this video, when you have to just do an emergency landing, if you're that far away, you're not gonna know where the hell you're landing, and it's gonna get lost. So my advice to you, especially when you're starting out, keep it at 200 meters, expand to 500 when you get a bit confident, but don't go further than 500. That is just asking for trouble. And in most countries, it is uh, against the law. You have to have a line of sight vision to your drone, so be aware of that. I'm gonna go through the menus now. So the maximum distance, it's set for flight protection, it's 2,000 meters. You can extend that all the way to no limit. But as a newbie, it's good to have a little bit of a range control, so when you get excited, it tells you, don't go too much. Return to home altitude, I always increase this to the maximum. Because this device has no sensors, you want it to avoid as many obstacles as possible. So the maximum one makes it fly further up in the sky and that usually avoids most potential obstacles. Compass is normal, IMU is normal, and you can also calibrate them if you have any issues. So emergency propeller stop. If you shoot these two down here or to the right, it will emergency stop the blades on the mini. So just be careful about doing that motion. That's something to be aware of. Right now I'm on position, metric units, gimbal mode, follow mode, FPV means you're flying like a bird, follow mode is the best one for me. You get different options of controlling the stick, I like mode too, I'll show you how to use that one, it's very easy. And you can calibrate the remote and have a flight tutorial. Camera, you get to choose if you want to do 4x3 or 16x9. 4x3 gets you a bigger picture of the view, so you can see here all the way to the left you can see uh, my NAS drive and my poker chips. And on the bottom, you can see I'm wearing shorts and the bottom of my shirt and my chains up here on the top. Whereas if you do 16 by nine, it just crops in and you can no longer see my shorts. You can still get the width, but you no longer get the height. So if you wanna get the most picture, four by three is probably the best. SD card, it's always a good idea to format your SD card when you're first starting out. Advanced settings, you can get histogram, overexposure warning, that's probably a good one because it tells you if it's too bright. That enables me to see what part of the footage is overblown. You can always boost up the brightness in post. If you use Final Cut Pro, that kind of stuff, you can make it brighter and you're good as a good person can be. However, if you shoot it too bright, you can never recover the details back. So this is exposure compensation and exposure lock. Sometimes I find that the scene's too dark or too bright, so if you make it maybe minus one. You can always have a solid exposure and you can always brighten it up in post in like Final Cut applications like that. Personally, I always like setting the exposure compensation to minus one. That keeps me very safe and protected most of the times. However, I'll get into that when it comes to the etage and I'll show you the footage and how it looks like. Anti-flicker is if you see him flickering on the screen with certain light conditions. Cache when recording means it will save a low quality screen onto your actual mobile device while it's out there and flying. I personally have that at 16 gigabytes because I want to record as much as possible. And when the catch is reached, the old files are deleted automatically. But you do want to get the best quality footage out of the Mavic via the SD card at the end of your show. Transmission, we're right now using 5.8. 5.8 is a shorter distance frequency, but it's less noisy because most Wi-Fi is at 2.4, travels further. Finally, you can check for firmware updates here. Fly safe database updates there. So that's pretty easy settings to go through. So we're gonna get into the video stuff. So you can switch between photo and video mode. Photo allows you to record 16 by nine as well as four by three. Four by three gets you more of the footage. So switch to four by three when taking photos. However, 16 by nine is for video. And for video, the first thing to do is switch it to 2.7K. Okay, with 1080p you can go 60 frames a second, but 2.7K gives you extra space to get good quality footage because you can crop in and make the shot a lot better. And if you need to stabilize, you can do that sort of stuff. So 2.7K, 30 frames a second. Beautiful, the quality is actually really good. And again, the exposure settings on the bottom right, press that on the remote and you can make it slightly darker and slightly increase it. But out of the box, it just works and it looks pretty good. Next up I wanna show you is video mode, which is the best mode to go through and uh, if you see right there, this is photo mode. You get a wide view and you can see the, the stripes means it's slight overexposure being detected on my screen. But if we go into video mode here, 
it crops in ever so slightly and you get to choose between at 1080p you can go all the way to 60 frames a second so you can get some nice fluid shots but 2.7k is what you want to use i use 30 frames a second because it gives me slightly more frames to play with and 2.7k and really there's nothing else to pick in this scene that's really interesting so previously you had a lot more options but it seems like all you can pick is 2.7k and 30 fps now when you're recording video you can't set the size of the camera so even if you would have selected 4x3 it crops into 16 by 9 when doing video it only allows you to do 4x3 if you're taking photos so i'd probably say it's 4x3 to get the full picture that you can modify later but for video you don't need to worry about that 2.7k 30 frames a second finally these are some nice important buttons to look out for so this is exposure compensation and exposure lock sometimes i find that the scene's too dark or too bright so if you make it maybe minus one you can always have a solid exposure and you can always brighten it up in post in like final cut applications like that whereas for starters you can keep it at zero and everything everything will be happy if you're doing complicated captures you can also lock in the exposure so that way it doesn't vary dramatically when you're trying to record but for now we're going to keep it automatic and we've got several different modes we got c p and s s is for sport mode for high speed if you're struggling against the wind s mode is the best c mode gets it really slow to get cinematic and p is regular so right now we've got no deep gps coverage because i am indoors we got our battery levels on the top right connection so that's it our drone is set up 